from a, a financial perspective, it's good, uh, 2023 is looking to be another very profitable year uh, for North American carriers, like it was in 2022. Um, some challenges, obviously, in the horizon because of some of the uh, challenges that we have from a regulatory standpoint and consumer protection. Also, staffing is a major issue at uh, airports, but more importantly, from a FAA standpoint in terms of uh, ATC uh, uh, functions. The uh, U.S. carriers have been asked to uh, reduce their capacity in the New York area by 10%. Uh, so that's a challenge that it is in the busiest time of the year for U.S. carriers. Now, if, if it's a good day, we're not going to experience any major challenge. The problem is what we're going to face is when there's bad weather, which is typical in the summertime, that's when we can experience a slowdown in the system. So regardless, by reducing uh, uh, the capacity, you're still going to have an impact. In terms of the staffing, it's going to take time. It's not something you could do overnight. Uh, these are technical uh, personnel that require an extensive period of training, uh, both in the classroom and on the job training. So we're going to face this challenge over the next couple of years because of the significant number of vacancies that are still there. As long as the weather cooperates, it certainly should be better. Uh, we just had a, a, our Memorial Weekend in the U.S., which is, was a very busy time uh, for travel, actually the, the, the busiest time this year, and everything went perfectly well, but the, the, uh, the U.S. had a great weather day. Uh, we can't expect that every day. But what is important is when we do have these bad scenarios or bad conditions, we need to ensure that the contingency places are in place that they do try to streamline the processes and reduce the, uh, the inconvenience as much as possible. It's gonna be another challenging year uh, for Latin American carriers. We are seeing strong recovery from a passenger and, and consumer standpoint. Uh, connectivity has returned. Actually, it's even better than it was in 2019. The major challenge in, in Latin America is the socioeconomic uh, challenges from a political standpoint. Uh, we've had significant changes in the political uh, landlight, uh, which is now leading into new regulatory policies uh, being implemented. Consumer protection is a heavy issue. And then the other item is taxation. Most of these governments are very are central to left type of uh, uh, policy making uh, governments, which tend to increase taxation instead of reducing. And for an industry that is like ours, that's already heavily taxed, that's going to make traveling more expensive. We have a great opportunity in Latin America with SAF. The natural resources available as a region probably are the best around the world. So the region can become a major producer and provider of SAF in the future. The problem we, that we have now is we don't have any SAF producers in the region, whereas in North America, Europe, and other parts of the world, there is, there's already development. We're lacking the regulatory policies. We're lacking the incentives uh, for private entities to come in and invest and in the production. And again, this is where government really needs to take a leadership role to really incentivize, create the policy that will bring these private uh, companies to begin to, pr to produce. If now, instead of being a major global producer, uh, we're gonna be a, a region that's gonna be dependent on other parts of the world to get the SAF.